Hello, hello and good evening everybody! Welcome! My name is Lisa Jens and I'm also known as Job Coach Germany. Hello you wonderful souls from all over the world. Tonight I'm inviting you to participate and just listen to me interviewing one of the expats who is already living here in Germany. So I am going to invite George, who's also known as the Canadian, to the stage. So let me just quickly try to arrange that here. Um, maybe here. Yeah. All right. So we will see. King. Okay. So there's somebody here already. Vinit is here. Hi. Thank you very much for joining. And we will just give it a couple more moments for George to come to the stage here. And then we will see whether this is working. So I've actually done this Instagram live before. We will see whether this is working or not. All right. Yeah. Okay. So should be, should be able to... <laughs> Vinit, maybe you can tell us where you're tuning in from. Where are you right now? So I'm in Germany. I'm in the northern part of Germany, in Magdeburg, right between Hanover and Berlin. But where are you? It's great of you to be here. And all right, George just joined. <laughs> George, I'm, um, I've tried to invite you to the stage already. So we will see whether this has worked. Okay, and Vinit is saying, I'm from Bangalore, India. Well, wonderful. It's quite late at your, your end already, isn't it? Okay, so I will try that again with George. We will see whether this is working. Now it's working. Hello, George. Good evening. Can you hear hello, me hello. properly? I can hear you. I can hear you. Brilliant. I can hear you too. So uh, wonderful and welcome to the stage. I've um, just opened up this session and told everybody that you are an expat living in Germany. So I can probably already say you are an impet uh, living here. And um, yeah, so George is also known as the Canadian. And um, we will talk a little bit about what he does here in Germany in a bit. But for now, Just let me tell you, I'm very, very pleased that you're here and that you're sharing your experiences here in Germany with us. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you very much for spending your evening with us here. So um, a couple of people are watching and if you guys have any questions in between, feel free to drop them in the comments box. And yeah, I would love to start by um, basically asking you, George, what your background is, why you are in Germany now. So I have done a little bit of research and we've spoken before. And um, so I know that your German life here is basically due to a love story. So Absolutely. why are you in Germany now? Absolutely. It's love. Right? Love brought me this far away from home. In my life, I never, ever imagined that I would be living in Germany. I didn't know anything about Germany except for the cars and the time period between 1939 and 1945. So that's yeah. the only thing I knew about this country. So I was like, mm, no. But I was in Costa Rica. Okay. A German girl walked by me. I said, hello. She said, hi. I said, what's your name? She said, Jennifer. Where are you from? Oh, you're from Germany. Okay. And today I'm here. That, that's the story. That's the short version. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, so I've been here. That's the short 20. version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and um, just to go back to the Costa Rica experience. So mm -hmm. were you on holiday and she was on holiday there as well? She went to do her FSJ, which is ah, like yeah. a voluntary year. Mm -hmm. And I was going to school down there. I okay. was also working as an English teacher. So in yeah. this time period, we walked by each other and I said hello. And uh, now yeah. my life has brought me this far to this side of the world. Yeah. And, I, and I'm happy. I love it. 
Yeah. That's wonderful. And I mean, it's, it's very far away from Canada. We always, it's like, I mean, um, across the ocean, basically. And um, I mean, uh, especially now, it's, uh, we have this, this Christmas time coming up. So Germans are really obsessed with that. I don't know whether you and your wife are preparing for that and decorating your, the place where you're living. But um, it's obviously very different. That's what I've experienced whenever I was abroad, that it's, it's really interesting to see how people are celebrating holidays. So do you enjoy this time of year in Germany? Oh, absolutely. It's my favorite time of the year. With the <laughs> Christmas markets and just the energy in the cities. It's very, very beautiful. There's a lot of traditions like uh, Erste, uh, the, the, the first Advent Zontag, yeah. right? You yeah. The first one, the second one, the third one. You have uh, uh, Nikolaus <laughs> on the 5th of December, I think. So all of these traditions are really, really beautiful. And I mm -hmm. love it because back in Canada, it's very commercialized. Yeah. It's, It's just Santa Claus, uh, Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. You buy presents. You yeah. gotta buy. So very, very commercialized. Although I love the snow. So I've always connected Christmas with snow. Yeah. And that's why living in Hanover was a little bit difficult because there was no snow. Yeah. So Christmas without snow to me is not really Christmas. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. So this is very interesting and exciting to hear because Hanover is actually very close to the area where I live, right? So Magdeburg is the city where I am and it's between Berlin and Hanover. And actually here in the northern part of Germany, we don't have any mountains. There's just like this one mountain that we have. So if you really want to have snow, we have to go to that mountain. It's called the Brocken. But actually I can't I was very very small when I, uh, I when when we had snow the last time for Christmas so I was probably around three or four years old and then after that no snow anymore for Christmas so this is very sad I can totally relate to that because it, it doesn't really feel like Christmas but so so your first um, location when you came to Germany was Hanover do you remember like what you liked the most about this city? The people I met. Okay. I met, um, and that's the thing is like, it was a difficult time period. Those first two years that I was in Germany, I didn't know oh. the language. I didn't have friends. I was trying to figure everything out with certain cultural differences, but I got really lucky and met some very beautiful people uh, who were supportive, who said, okay, George, yeah, like, I'm here for yeah. you. Yeah, and that's, 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 oh yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, somehow I, I, uh, I, I didn't hear you anymore, but there are hearts coming in and, um, <laughs> <laughs> and there are some questions coming in, in as well. So people are asking about Stuttgart and um, so the southern city more in the southern part. And we will get to that in a little bit. But um, yeah, just staying with that thought of people actually giving you that feeling of comfort or not. Because that's something that I have realized. So the first city that I went to, to, yeah, just pursue and start my career was an hour to the west from Magdeburg. It's called Wolfsburg. And um, it's basically a city between Hanover and Magdeburg. And I remember I didn't like this city at all because I, I had the view. So um, where I come from, we have um, a lot of a lo uh, what I think many buildings that are related to uh, cultural aspects. And this the city of Wolfsburg is just very industrialized so it's um just this car manufacturer and everything was built around that and i i thought no i don't like that that city but it was about the people so all of the people that i met there i met so many cool friends and i have the feeling i mean that was easy for me because i was german in germany but you are from canada coming to germany <laughs> and um uh, we all know who who have ever yeah been in touch with germans it's actually not that easy to make friends mm -hmm. so um do you have a a trick how you how you met your first friends so it was difficult and i'm already very extroverted 
So yeah. even for someone with my personality, I love making friends. And even for, for me, it was a difficult thing. What helped was I think um, I got a job working at a school. Oh. So through work, I met some really nice people there. Um, I'm trying to think also through my wife and her family, I met some oh. other really nice. So that helps. I have a German wife. So that's a huge advantage. Yeah. It connects me to people. Uh, yes. Yeah. I sometimes I wonder if I had come to this country by myself without a German wife, I don't know how I would have managed it. Mm -hmm. It would have been a, a more challenging uh, experience. Yeah. But I, I think if you really want something, you can always make it work. Right? Yeah. And that's something yeah. that I learned from my parents. My parents are immigrants themselves. They come from Latin America. Uh, mm. and they fought for everything they have in Canada. So yeah. they've, taught me George mm -hmm. you gotta fight if you, if you yeah. want something in life you gotta fight for it so I have that spirit of my yeah. parents that I can always find a way I can always adapt I can always figure it out right? yeah and so that helps to have that mentality that no it's, it's it wasn't easy but it's possible yeah it's but that's a, that's wonderful that your parents taught you that I mean um, and that you saw that they were also living that, yeah, living to, okay, you have to fight for something that you really want. And, um, but I can, I, I think I can relate that you say it's a lot easier when you have a German wife, but obviously you are still an individual. And at some point you don't just want to have the friends or the family of your wife, but you want to have somehow your life on your own. So it's really great to see that you were able to make friends through your work life as well yeah so so this this really helps and i mean with your profession you are a business english teacher um a very a professional teacher so basically that i think because you are into languages already helps you with an international field but the first friends that you made were there germans involved or were they all internationals good question I I'm trying to think. I don't think there were any Germans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I can't think of, of any Germans. I, it, but it's it's the language. It's definitely yeah. a question of language, uh -huh. and that's why my advice to anyone who comes to Germany: do everything you can to learn this language. It's yeah. not an easy language, but it will make your life so much easier and it will just open up this country to you if you can develop some language skills. And I think Germans will appreciate it too. If they yeah. see that you make an effort, they'll, they'll appreciate it and they'll try to help you. Um, but if you don't, then it, it, can, it can be a challenge, especially with older generations. Oh, yeah, um, that's true. The, the but... older generations, it's, there's the expectation that you have to speak their language. So that mm. was always a struggle with like the, the grandparents. Uh, like oh, yeah. And things like that. Um, that was a challenge. But um, yeah, learning the language definitely mm. makes everything easier. But before I knew the language, I was able to find international friends. Yeah. Okay. That's wonderful. Yeah. The, I mean, and it also, this is always something that I hear when I'm talking to expats that it also helps with your feelings because sometimes you get into a cultural shock and maybe your wife doesn't understand because your wife is in Germany. She, she, she is German. She understands how we Germans are crazy in some sort of sense sometimes. But if you meet other internationals, they can relate to the stage that you're in and then say, yeah, I, I went through the same phase. And I mean, Your wife can probably also remember that when she, for example, went to Costa Rica for her FSJ, um, she went through the same experience, but it's still different because you have different cultures. Yeah. So this is really, re I always think it's a great uh, idea to have a mixture, obviously improving your German language so that you can integrate into the German culture, but also international friends so that you can relate to the different cultural adjustments because obviously we Germans are very direct and sometimes you can feel offended by us <laughs> which we don't really mean in a mean way but yeah no but that it took me time to understand that yeah uh, I come from a society which is extremely polite Canadians are oh. very 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 polite 
We're never yeah. going to tell you anything that's going to make you uncomfortable. We don't want to make you uncomfortable. We, we want you to feel good all of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was a shock to be yeah. in a society where people will tell you things directly and strangers will tell you things directly. And I was like, oh. Uh, but then I, I met a, a man, his name is Benny, and he originally mm -hmm. comes from Iran. Mm -hmm. And I was expressing to him some of the challenges that I was dealing with of people like just telling me things very directly. And like, and I'm like, man, this is so rude and it's very offensive. And he says, George, I came to Germany in the 1980s. As uh, yeah. Iranian men. At oh, the, wow. When the wall fell down and there was a, the reunification between the East and the West, there was a lot of hatred and a lot of violence towards immigrants in this time period he mm. said, when i was here at that time period people would actually physically attack me oh wow right and he would be called like shy i was like he's like george mm. this country has con come a very very long way mm. yes i understand today it can be harsh and it can be rude and difficult but this is such an improvement of where the country was 20 30 years ago so yeah. I've gone through it, George, and you mm. can be certain that I'm going to be here with you if you need me, oh. your friend. And that Benny to me was like uh, my savior at that time period. Yeah, it really, really helped me. So, yeah, look, look for people who have gone through something similar. And that's yeah. something I will also offer to other people if they want to reach out to me. I've been here for six years. They <sighs> want to reach out. They want to ask questions. I'll, I'm open to answer any questions. Oh, and wonderful. Like about the country, about the culture, about the language. I'm definitely open to, to giving my, my experience, sharing my experiences. That is so kind of you, George. Thank you so much. So everybody, you've heard it. And um, just just go for it and contact George. Yeah, George Robletto. So that's basically how you find him. And I will also tag him in underneath the video so that you all know how, where to find him. And George has a lot more things to offer because he actually also has a podcast that's called The Canadian Wants to Know, right? So what is your intention with that? Exactly. So the idea with the podcast is to give uh, learners of the English language the opportunity to develop their listening skills. People say to me, George, I will only learn English when I move to the UK or if I move to America. And I say to them, have you ever heard of the Internet? There's <laughs> the Internet and you can learn many things on this Internet. And um, so that's the, uh, the the idea is that I give people the opportunity to practice their listening skills. Every episode comes with a vocabulary list, comprehension questions. And I'm always looking for interview partners that come from different parts of the English speaking world so that they can listen to different accents. Because at this point, people always say to me, George, your accent is really easy to understand. <laughs> but if I listen to someone from Australia or from India or from the Philippines, then I struggle. And I say, okay, then I need to find people with yeah. those accents so that you can get used to it and accustomed to it over time yeah so that's the idea is i want to give people opportunities to practice their listening but i don't like just talking about grammar all the time that's boring <laughs> yeah so i have conversations about things that i'm interested in i love travel so i want to learn about different countries uh i'm interested in different ways of living. So I recently spoke with a digital nomad and I'm like, wow, that's a very fascinating way to live. What uh -huh. is it like to be a digital nomad? So those are the conversations I have. Um, and they're interesting to me. So hopefully they're interesting for other people too. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And I mean, the um, it also gives um, everybody not just a chance to uh, practice their English skills and English listening skills, but also uh, to learn more about the topics that you're interested in. So they learn more about you as a person, but as on uh, at the same time, they also learn something for their life, something that they are interested in as well. So this is very cool. So um, everybody, I can just recommend that to you to tune in to George's podcast, The Canadian Wants to Know. And um, so this actually is also aligned with your with your job. So you are a professional business English teacher. So English as a second language, I assume, or just as a foreign language in, in general. So 
wasn't that hard to set up a business here in Germany? That's a good question. Um, I've, I am not afraid. <laughs> I'm trying new <laughs> things. Um, uh, but I get that from my parents. My mm -hmm. parents are risk takers and I've, I've have that inside me too. So I didn't yeah. think about it. I didn't think <laughs> if it was hard or not hard. I just said, I'm in Germany. I don't speak the German language. I don't have any other network or, or I have to find something to do. And when mm -hmm. I lived in Costa Rica, I was teaching English at a school. So I had that skill and yeah. I said, let's do this. Let's figure it out. My wife said, no, George, if you don't speak German, you won't be able to explain the concepts to your students. And I said, well, I don't care. I'm going to try it anyways. So I did it. Mm -hmm. And little by little trial and error, I had to learn different yeah. things. But of course, I have the advantage that my wife managed a lot of the administrative things. Oh, that's like good. Getting the tax number, okay. paying my taxes, getting my the Rentenversicherung, all the insurances that I need. So I was mm -hmm. very, very lucky that I have her support. Yeah. Um, and then I also asked her about that today because she still does that for me. And I said, like, is, is it hard? Because I know Lisa is going to ask me. And she's like, no, George, it's actually not so hard. So the German <laughs> told me it's not so hard. I don't know if that's something we should believe because she's a German. So of course, it's easier for her. Um, but for someone out there who is interested in starting a business, mm -hmm. uh, especially what I do, I'm a freelancer. Yeah. It's definitely possible. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there's paperwork. But if, if you do things and you look for advice on the Internet, you can also reach out to me and you will definitely be able to. So don't let those obstacles prevent you from chasing after your dreams. Oh, this is so wonderfully said. <laughs> My heart is melting. That's really, really good. Yeah, that's wonderful. I love that. I mean, um, so, uh, I mean, I think you have these obstacles of setting up your business or coming up with a freelance um, business. You can, it's still a business. So uh, with anyone whether that is a German person or an international person, a Canadian in Germany, I think if you're following the sentence that your parents told you, this thought you have to fight for what you want, and, uh, everything's possible. This is really, really helpful. And so the when you are when you are teaching English here in Germany with You can still hear and see us. So and thank you all for your. Oh yeah. So I think you're back. I think we're. I think you're back. Yeah, we're we're back. Okay. Yeah. So um, when you are teaching uh, English to professionals, that, that so that's what I I've seen that you are working with professionals who have not enough time. Uh, most of the so they are busy with their work schedule and so on. So when I remember learning English in school, it was most of the time German teachers who have learned English themselves. Maybe if we were lucky, those English teachers went abroad for a year, so they actually practiced their English skills. But we were always taught in German and in English. Only at the later stage, just before we made uh, did our Abitur, they would um, speak the entire the session in English, but before that, it was mostly English and German. So, how is that? Um, can you would you let us know this the secret of your your sessions? Are they entirely in English or a mixture? They're entirely in English. They're entirely mm -hmm. in English. I, I'm working with professionals who need English to deal with international clients. So, mm -hmm. what we do is mostly speaking. They want to develop their communication skills and also develop more confidence. Um, yeah. Being perfect is not the point. So, for them, it's can I develop more confidence so that when I interact with international people, I won't be shaking? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I, I, what I, a lot of what I do is basically motivation and yeah. just getting them to feel more free as yeah. they speak and also to help them see the language in a more positive way so mm -hmm. lots of coaching motivating and yeah. a little bit of grammar here and there 
<laughs> Wonderful. But I think that is the, the biggest part because whenever I see people learning another language or what I have from my own experience is basically, first of all, I was studying a lot and learning vocabulary and then trying to listen to other to, to people speaking English but then the the greatest hurdle was for me to speak and then especially talking to people who are yeah who, who whose first language is English basically because then obviously it was in my mind all the time they are judging me I'm making mistakes and so on And um, that's why I think this aspect that you're mentioning, that you're coaching them and that you're motivating them is, is really, really important. I think that's the most important part. So that's wonderful. So everybody that, that uh, actually needs English in their, in their life, so if I, I'm meeting people who will need that, I will definitely direct them to you so that they can uh, go through the English language journey with you. Because sometimes, obviously... Okay. You're back. Sorry You're for back. the interruption. So that's that's very interesting. So um, now we've talked a little bit about your time here uh, in the area where I'm living, close to the area where I'm living in Hanover. And you said that you were there for two years, but now you're living somewhere else. So where are you currently? So close to Freiburg in the Schwarzwald in the Black Forest. To me, the most beautiful part of Germany. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably get snow for Christmas, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely. There's lots of snow in the Schwarzwald, so it makes me very, very happy. Wonderful. The feeling of home, of being yeah. back home. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So, and why did you move to Freiburg? The mountains. Yeah. I, a lot of Germans, they laugh at me when they say that, but that's <laughs> the reason we came down here is I come from the west of Canada, close mm -hmm. to the Rocky Mountains. The north is very flat, and I yeah. need to see some mountains. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's a very, very beautiful region of the country, uh, nature-wise. Uh, there's also, I can go to France, Switzerland, yeah. Italy, Austria. They're not so far away. So it makes it easy to travel. When I say, okay, I've had enough of Germany, yeah. I can just go for a day trip outside. Yeah, so it's quite <laughs> let's nice. go somewhere so else. That, that was the reason. Because I, yeah. work, I work online, so I could yeah. definitely, I could live anywhere in, in Germany. Uh, yeah. So we chose to be here. And I think that's a beautiful thing when you get yeah. to choose where you live, not because you have to, but because you want to. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And it's so wonderful that you can combine that with your work and that you can work remotely uh, and work from anywhere just uh, using the internet. So this is really, really great because obviously it, it um yeah just increases your the fulfillment of your life and how happy you are and um especially in that area where you are i mean it's a beautiful spot and as you say there also it's very easy to get to other countries um and it also obviously is is a wonderful idea to go if you have this possibility to live in an area where you actually feel like this is as close to home as it can get and it feels like a second home um so when you are um now now the best part of of the area where you're living are you doing also like winter sports in your free time uh that's a good question the last time i went skiing i was 20 years old so yeah. i'm not i'm not very good at skiing yeah i can ice skate I can oh, good! <laughs> Canadian winters are very cold, so as a kid, yeah. like, I, I was always skating. But skiing yeah. was more expensive. Mm. So for my family, skiing, I, I've done it maybe three, four times in my life. Yeah. Uh, so hiking, lots of hiking. Yeah. Um, and ice skating, I do that. Yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah. But going back to this idea of maybe someone, an international person who comes to Germany, maybe their first location is not mm. the ideal yeah what my message to that person is 
you can look for another place in Germany that's better. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to stay there. <laughs> yeah. That's a beautiful message. Yeah. And it's so true as well. I mean, when here in the northern part, I always meet people that are, I always have the feeling there are two sides. So one side always says, no, I want to stay close to the coast and want to, want to be by the, by the sea or something like that. But then there are the other people because we don't have any mountains. No, I really want to go south because there are the mountains. I really want to live there. And I mean, it's exactly. whenever I go to the southern part of Germany, it just feels like holiday. It feels like vacation to me because of the mountains, obviously, yeah, and this beautiful nature, the countryside that's just so so beautiful. And, and um, country, the country is very, very diverse, and I think that's something I didn't know. I thought yeah. that everywhere was like Hanover. I'm like, oh, but now I know there's all different types of landscapes and cultures and dialects and food. Yeah. This country has so much to offer. Uh -huh. uh, so I, I would encourage people travel inside of Germany, visit yeah. different parts of it, the east, the west, the north, the south. There's a lot of beauty here. That's that's so great advice. Thank you very much, George. So now if people want to reach out to you, where can they actually find you? So they can go on my website, the Canadian with a hyphen after yeah. the, dot com. Uh, and then they can also follow me here on Instagram. Uh, you can also subscribe to my podcast, The Canadian Wants to Know. And um, if they also want to reach out to me, I'm definitely open to answering any questions that someone has about life in Germany, about the German language, about the cultural differences. I've had a lot of time to think about it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, six years is a long time already. It's, it really is like your home again. Yeah, it's like a second home to you, isn't it? Absolutely. At this point, I, I, the, with the new government, they oh. want to give people the opportunity to have a second passport. Because oh, yeah. the way it works today is I would have to give up my Canadian passport. Yeah. And I'm never going to do that. Yeah. But if Germany says I can also have a German passport, I want to be German. Right? I feel very much connected to this country, uh, to the people of this country. And I want to contribute and continue to be a uh, uh, a member of this society and, and do the best I can to make this country even better. Yeah, and, and that's really, really good. I think that's a very good aspect of the new government as well, that you can, that this opportunity is there now, because uh, obviously it's uh, really hard to, th that's what I always thought, just that you have to give up your own, your passport in order to become a German citizen. So you don't want to do that. So it's mm -hmm. great that you can, have dual citizenship now. So that's, yeah. that's wonderful. Well, everybody that has been uh, following us and um, joining us here, there were a couple of people like Eddie said hi from Hanover, much love from Hanover. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, there were people from, yeah, basically from all around the globe here. Yeah, so that was really wonderful. And then, oh yeah, one, one comment I wanted to keep, um, share with you balance balancing cultures said keep up the motivational work george and a little heart thank so you, that's megan. really wonderful you, megan. Yeah, <laughs> no, megan is a really really incredible human being that i've met recently because of oh. the podcast so that's also one of the beautiful things about podcasting is i can make new friends like you. yeah yes so i will keep yeah. podcasting <laughs> yeah, that's such a great idea. And I mean, I'm so happy that we met through your podcast as well. So and I made a new friend from abroad in Germany now. So this is really, really cool. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us tonight, George. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, I'm looking forward. Yeah. yeah, wish you all the best as well. Thank you very much and have a lovely evening. Thank Cheers. you. Bye bye. 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 <laughs>